before uh, asking you uh, and focusing on uh, the AI Act, uh, I have a first question uh, for uh, Francois. Uh, could you tell us uh, a little more about uh, the Montreal Declaration uh, of uh, Responsible Development of AI and also uh, how uh, Canadian uh, uh, companies address the compliance of this uh, declaration? Um, well, that, that's the, the Montreal Declaration. So, so I think basically, well, a few years ago, at least in Montreal, there was kind of this buzz about AI, everything happening very fast, like the Miller, the Institute. And as part of this, I think the Montreal Declaration is really about all the all people looking at the potential of AI and being conscious that it should be used properly. But I think we're looking at what has been discussed. Obviously, it's not... Uh, a standardization or, or a, a, a roadmap to standardize. I think it looks more like a, a societal project because this is aiming at, uh, at goals that are good for society, for people, and they want to make sure being aware that AI could also be misused to make sure they want to put in writing, basically, and have uh, the ecosystem adhering to these kind of these values, basically. So, um, Thank you. Uh, I will ask uh, the second question to Philippe because uh, you have a constraint. So uh, what are for you the major, major challenge to be addressed for putting in place the AI Act? For putting in place the AI Act. For, do, do you mean, you mean to, to implement the AI yeah, Act? Yeah. Well, I, I think we've discussed most of the issues in the last two days, right? I mean, first of all, I, I think there's still, uh, I hope that there will still be uh, more internal discussions and, and probably a couple of changes to the AI Act. Um, as Claire, so Claire's this European AI uh, association, um, we've actually provided 46 pages uh, <laughs> to the degree that I know it's one of the most extensive and I think also uh, very good uh, feedback. That was on the proposed regulation, so there was the input that then went into the AI Act. I hope it was at least considered. Certainly, certain aspects were uh, covered, but but yeah. So I, I think there still needs to be some refinement on the AI Act. Um, uh, but then the the key element from my perspective, and I kind of tried to convey that in my in my presentation, is is really we need to develop the methods that make it possible to provide any sort of guarantees for the AI system, right? We can, of course, we can do process certification and, and a lot of the other elements, but as, as long as we cannot provide any guarantees about the underlying technology, it's very, very hard to build uh, really reliable and then trustworthy uh, systems on top of that. So, and, and that's where I think we, as I said, we in Europe are, are very well positioned in terms of the research, in terms of the close collaboration with industry, and also in terms of the politicians who try to actually push for, for that, uh, I think we're very well positioned to actually make, implement that. And like, like with the GB, uh, GDPR, uh, set international standards by, um, with, with what we're doing here. So there's a high potential, but we also have to be careful that we do the right thing because it can also uh, backfire if we're not careful, if we're not doing it right. Thank you. Patrick, you want to add, I'm sure that you want to complete. Yeah, so I, I would like to, to add a couple of things. Well, a lot of people think that they, they're going to change the AI Act. Well, maybe, maybe don't, I um, suspect you. <laughs> um, but now I'm, I'm still very much surprised uh, as um, how much people want the AI Act to be changed and are not even considering uh, um, participating to standardization because standardization is going to support the AI Act. If there are things that you don't like in the AI Act, may, well, maybe in standardization you may, you know, uh, find the, the flexibility that you don't have in, 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 uh, in the AI Act. Uh, and this is a, a very surprising to me to see, uh, to, to see how many people in Europe is uh, uh, reading the AI Act, analyzing it, sending thousands and thousands of, of comments and not participating in the, in the standardization. That's, for me, that, that is a mystery because you're, you're fully entitled to participate to, 
to standardization and all we can do uh, uh, with the AI Act is if just send comments and that's it and pray f to be heard. If you want to Yeah, may maybe I, I, I should respond to that a little bit. Um, there, there is limited time, right? And as researchers, we are working on one side of things. And I, I absolutely agree there could be valuable input from the research point of view, but the way standards are being developed, uh, it's very hard for, for researchers to actually engage. Um, and actually, one of the things we are, we, we have looked into in Claire, we've actually started things, um, and I, th I think there's more we can do. Uh, we've actually talked about a, uh, essentially establishing an interface between the researchers working on the core technology and then the people working on the standards, mm. right? Because for the researchers to sit in those standards meeting, that will not be very productive. But if we can formulate like the key questions from the standardization point of view and then get the feedback from the research side and maybe uh, in, the, in the opposite direction, I think that's something we're missing. And, and I would be very, very interested to maybe talk more about that and, and how we can get the expertise from the research uh, and, and the expertise about standardization to the researchers. There, we, need to, we need some form of a translation between the two. Yeah, uh, uh, very interesting uh, remark. And I, I totally agree with you. We, we, we need to bridge the gap uh, between research and, and standardization. But this is what we, we, we're trying to do within JTC 21. We have four working groups. We're actually three are really working because one group is just advisory. And on those three working groups, two are chaired by researchers, by uh, people coming from the uh, from academy. So you, 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 we made sure that you've been heard, your point of view uh, as researchers uh, um, uh, are being t taken into account. There are ways to do that, uh, but I, I agree with you, it's a long process uh, and painful process for researchers to get involved in standardization. Um, yeah. but, but, but for example, right, if, if, if there are key questions from the standardization point of view, uh, we as Claire would be very, very happy, for instance, to then rope in people from our research network, which is really large, uh, who, who make my, I mean, they probably will not necessarily sit in those working groups, but if there's key questions. So, but maybe we can take that offline to maybe Maybe, Agnès, you can uh, uh, make a, a little return of uh, lesson learned because you are in both sides. Uh, in both sides, what sides? We are in many <laughs> you sides. You are also involved in uh, standardization and you are a researcher. But not only a researcher, since uh, the L&E um, works for industry, uh, we are not really uh, fully researchers, so not only from academia. So I can only agree with everyone, <laughs> since now I know um, the standardization side, I know the research side, I know the industry side, I just agree with everyone. Okay, at one point, the gap will be uh, bridged. If I may add on the initial question you asked uh, about what could um, miss uh, in view of compliance to the AI Act, you said that we covered perhaps all of the topics, uh, but something uh, that we didn't really talk uh, talked of during the days here, uh, it's the importance of the infrastructure, I'm not able to pronounce it, infrastructure, I'm not able to pronounce it, equipment for testing, uh, so simulation and places, physical places as well to perform tests. Once uh, so we know some tests are going to be uh, imposed um, in certain domains. Uh, for this, uh, there are many activities, for example, at the European level through research uh, fundings for the development of ecosystems, uh, infrastructures. So for industry, it will be really important, it's going to be the front end uh, to, with which they are going to interact in view of conformity. Francois, in, in Canada, did you have the same concern? Um, well, I, I think it, in general we're lagging, because like for instance uh, in Canada, in Quebec, just as of a few weeks, the equivalent of the GDPR just was put into effect. So that's probably two to three years beyond what has been done in Europe. And um, 
same, I, I would say in, well, in Quebec, and even Quebec is in advance compared to the rest of Canada or their provinces. And that was just a, a modernization of the Privacy Act that was uh, established in the 80s. So, so, uh, but what I find interesting, because obviously I'm not an expert in standards, but uh, for me, uh, a takeaway message is that I find it interesting that we try to standardize a core technology. Normally, uh, as we said in presentation, you expect standard, let's say, for the aeronautics, how you deal with the technology in the aerospace industry or in transportation or medical devices, but trying to standardize, let's say, a core technology applicable to all markets, uh, for me, is something new. So. We'll see, uh, we'll, we'll see what, what will happen uh, in North America. I know there are discussions at NIST, you mentioned, and other bodies, because they're in, uh, in North America, we're in between. We're looking at what you're doing, generally it takes a couple of years, and we kind of uh, implement similar concepts, but it, it will be interesting to see how it will uh, evolve over the, the next years. And uh, following the presentation of the LNE and what we have seen uh, for the, the, the two days or three days, uh, I ask uh, uh, for Agnès, uh, you, you propose a certification process. Do you think that uh, the seven good practices that the Confiance.ai propose could, be, could support your uh, process methodology? I don't know how it can uh, directly uh, support that the only thing that I can observe is um, that we are in, on both sides, but not only uh, in Confiance AI, in the LNA certification, we are going in a same common direction uh, from all that I can hear, uh, you were mentioning, Patrick, uh, all the comments that are made against or commenting, criticizing, well, uh, for, for the AI Act. Uh, but from my own point of view, I'm just, well, I'm more positive, perhaps, uh, because I see that we are all talking about the same things. We all almost agree. The question is only, well, how to achieve uh, each steps towards uh, that. So, in my opinion, it's LNE certification, Confiance AI, we are defending the same values, in fact. So, coherence is natural. Okay, thank you. Uh, for all of us, uh, uh, one question before, if uh, there are all other questions from the, the attendees. What can, you, uh, what can your organization and your networks bring in support to AI uh, Act or to standardization? Easy question for me. I'm, I'm the middle well, of... First, for yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Joint Technical Committee at the European uh, level I'm, uh, in connection uh, with uh, everybody and I'm trying to reach out to everybody. Um, uh, uh, I'll reach out to um, uh, uh, SME's association which are joining now JTC 21 because they have to defend their point of view. Uh, I've reached out to Eurocontrol as a, um, on UK uh, last week because we had this uh, discussion around uh, aligning uh, um, vertical standardization in the aeronautics domain on horizontal standard standardization. I will be brief the uh, health sector uh, in, uh, next week. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to reach out to everybody. I, I speak to Japanese. Uh, the Japanese um, have uh, very similar um, questions uh, yeah, to them than um, uh, we, we have. Uh, to the U.S., I'm speaking to Australia as, as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm everywhere, and I, I do what I <laughs> what I can. Maybe M maybe I take over because I have to run yeah. to get my train. Um, so sorry for that, but uh, I, that is the last train to bring me home today. Um, so I have to catch it. Um, yeah, so I, I think there, there is, a, first of all, as a, as a large research institute in Germany, of course, we have lots of contacts to industry. So really getting the feedback from the industry but and, and develop the technology for the industry is, is really key for, for what we're doing. 
and, and then not doing this just in Germany, but really linking up with France, with, with the, the Confiance AI ecosystem, with INRIA, and so on, but, but then jointly also, right, enlarge that to, to Europe through Claire and other um, organizations that are active there. I think that's really key, and, and we need to focus more uh, on, on that, right? Of, of course, it's important to do our homework, but really also try pushing that uh, to the larger ecosystem. And I think there's a lot that we can still do there. And with that, thank you very much. And I'm sorry that <laughs> no, I have to leave. No, thank you, too. <laughs> Francois, you want to complete and, and uh, have a good uh, trip back? Yeah, well, I, I, well, as I presented this morning, so I think in, in, in Quebec, our, our ecosystem basically went to join force with Confiance, right? Because there's a lot of issues. I think locally, probably, uh, we'll have to raise awareness also about trustworthy AI. Because uh, what I've seen uh, like in the last days, like companies are well aware of limitation of issues in our own ecosystem. They're probably, people are still using AI and uh, various. A lot of them think it's a magic box where everything works. So, uh, but this is part of our, uh, our goal. We're not, at this stage, we're not really thinking about standardization or all this, but maybe it will come as we, uh, as we uh, join force and, uh, and work uh, collaboratively on some, some projects. And yes? Yes, as for Eleni, well, it was quite clear from the presentation on certification, we can provide such things. I mentioned as well the importance of testing facilities. Well, we are a testing laboratory, so we are currently uh, designing and implementing um, our, well, future uh, testing facilities for both embedded AI and software AI, so big task. Uh, so this is the way we can contribute the most actively um, to the ecosystem. Maybe uh, some people in the attendees has uh, at least a complimentary uh, answer or questions? I don't see, <laughs> sorry. You have one? Just a little question for you all. So if we, uh, if the AI Act, as it is written, let's say, as of last year or maybe now, takes, into, takes force now, there is no AI applications for high-risk systems. What do you think? Who want to answer it's this question <laughs> tricky question? Well, uh, the, the, the thing is that, um, honestly, we are not ready for, for the AI Act. And this is one of the key challenges that we are facing. When the AI Act comes, if we're not ready, we're going to, uh, uh, to lose... Uh, uh, market shares, uh, we're going to lose time, we're going to lose money. And uh, when I say we, it's, yeah, it's a collective. Uh, it's a, um, so uh, anticipation is key. People have to consider uh, the AI Act coming, not waiting the last minute because uh, uh, organization will have to be certified uh, ISO 42001, for example. Well, don't think that it's going to be easy. Don't think it's going to be given. Don't think that uh, there will be plenty of, uh, of uh, accredited organization that could certify your, your, your company. So if you uh, wait till the, till the last minute to get ready, you're in a big, big, big trouble. Um, on some for uh, AI products, you have to, to anticipate, um, uh, get organized, uh, uh, prepare your processes and so on. So right now, if they are act where we're approved today and on, on, uh, put in, in, into, uh, uh, into application today, uh, well, um, a lot of things w w would be stopped. Thank you. Um, so if the act disappeared all of a sudden, uh, what, would, what would we do? Uh, I think that no. That's not the question. If it doesn't come into force. 
Oh, if it does today, oh, sorry, I was creating my own question. <laughs> and I, was, I had an answer already. Answer your question. Answer your question, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to answer my question then. Um, because it made, made me think of one thing that we observed. So in, in today, in the absence of the AI Act, what we see, a lot, so I'm talking here in the context of critical domains, not in um, high-risk AI, but it may be uh, quite close. Uh, what we see that is that today there are um, products that are put on the market, they embed AI, but uh, current regulation in these domains and for these types of products, they only, well, only cover the surface of AI, they treat it as software, so it means that there, there is a lack of confidence. It's hard to go on, on answering a fictive question that I invented in my mind. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. Did, uh, do you have some uh, other remark or other question in the yeah. attendees? Yes. I, I, I would like to, uh, to answer to, <laughs> to the question of... Uh, the, the question. To the first question. Actually, the, the, the problem is about the, the building of trust uh, in our society. Uh, if there is no AI regulation, uh, we're going to see a lot of, of, uh, of products and services that we, we won't trust. And because we won't trust them, we, uh, we will not trust on that the, the, the regulator let those, those products on the market. We won't trust the regulator as well because we are... You know, it's, it's an old ecosystem of trust. We have to trust our government, we have to trust the products, we have to trust the organization, and all, our, our, all things are linked. We're living in, a, in, a, in, a, in years where trust is essential. We'll see every day, if we don't trust our governments, while well, things turn, uh, uh, are turning bad. So, um, uh, the, the, the impact of not having the AI Act or, or, or on the protection that it, it, it will bring is huge. Uh, it's, a, 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 it's a social uh, societal uh, 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 impact. So your question was really good, actually. And, and what is your opinion, uh, Francois? Uh, well, I would say just being really new to this topic, but okay, so first answer for me is that he, he, the act doesn't apply in Canada, so we're good for a while. <laughs> but um, no, but, but but I think uh, just from what I've seen from the act, obviously there are these level of uh, criticity, and typically, for me, this is in continuity with you know regulatory framework. So let's say medical application or autonomous vehicles, you know, typically regulated industries are naturally aware of these issues and they know they, they want to, they, they think being regulated, they want to demonstrate compliance and they understand that with the huge potential of AI, but also with all the constraints and the challenges to demonstrate this. But from what I've seen, the, the act covers this fundamental aspect. So more critical application, the requirements will be probably higher than uh, other types of, uh, of application. But, uh, I guess to be seen now, it's going to be put up in place in practice. Yes, I, I would like to react on, on one of your statements, which is the AI Act doesn't, uh, will not apply to Canada. Well, actually, the Europe is the first market in the world. So if you want to uh, 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 export product in Europe, well, you, you will have to comply with your uh, European uh, uh, regulation. And then... Um, this is actually the ambition of the, uh, of the European uh, Commission, is to, to set up a, a, a level which everybody will have to, to pass, because, because the, the, the main strength of the European uh, uh, Union is to be the first market in the world. And then when you, do, uh, you, you, are, you have that power, you set up the rules. So you're going to be impacted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the, this, uh, this I agree. I would say, in general, in Canada, a big portion of our ecosystems are multinationals that are present at the same time in Europe, in the States, and in Canada. So uh, they are well aware. We're at this kind of strange place between the US that have, let's say, a kind of 
fairly open market about selling data of all kinds to anyone, uh, all this stuff. So uh, I guess we'll have to see what will be this kind of equilibrium between the regulatory requirements that will come out from the states and, uh, and yours in Europe also, probably. I think. So I think uh, if there is no more question, we will close the round table. But uh, just before closing, if you have one or two sentences about what you have seen or about the, this uh, round table, I give you the floor to have a, a short conclusion. Yeah, um, I, I think we're seeing a, a, a lot of momentum in, in AI, people starting to understand uh, what is at stake, the complexity of it uh, as well. And we're discovering every day that it's even, even more, more complex than what we thought, uh, yeah, it's uh, endless. And um, speaking from my um, uh, own activity, I think we, we have to raise awareness of the strategic importance of standardization on, I would say, even on sovereign standardization. I mean, we, if we want to, 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 master, to be the master of our, of our future, we should be part of the, the, the development of those standardization, uh, those standards that are going to apply to our product services and organizations, and which will be part of our ecosystem of trust. Yes. Um, what I observed uh, during these days was the, the strength of collaboration. We saw, and it was quite clear in Confiance.ai, uh, collaboration between industry, uh, research, other stakeholders, not only large groups, but also smaller companies. Uh, we saw collaboration with naturally, Canada, uh, but we saw also other initiatives, like today, uh, the memory of understanding, uh, with uh, German uh, institutions, because there were also presentations, uh, so, and many others uh, we saw from Sweden, uh, I think that yesterday, so I think that this is the main strength of what we saw during the days. Francois? Yeah, I would have similar comments. No, in Quebec, I've been kind of promoting uh, the initiative, you know, mostly with PowerPoint slides and a couple of information that has been shared from colleagues. Uh, but the, I'd say the, the, the diversity, the, the, the strength, like the, the number of, of persons who showed up and uh, the number of posters and topics and uh, for, for a two-year initiative, uh, a lot of work has been done. And uh, as mentioned, it seems collaborative with industrial partners, students, uh, research center, and, uh, and a very collaborative approach. So we're looking forward to, uh, to be able to, to join in and put our, uh, our, our force also in, uh, in Quebec at, uh, to, to, to work on some of these challenges. Thank you all. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we will conclude the, the day. Thanks you again for the round table.